What's up guys, welcome back to another video doing in Sony Peterborough. This one's a bit special, we teased a couple of videos ago that we'd uh, approached quite a big company to come and work with us and they agreed to it. This week they've sent us out one of their new tools to test. So we were looking for a new diagnostic tool. As you've seen in one of the Audi videos we've done, we've done the ABS diagnostic and the airbag diagnostics with a wee cheap eBay tool. Now, at that point, we were researching diagnostic tools and I actually approached Top Don um, about their 8800 diagnostic tool. And they came back to me and said, yeah, let's send you one out, do a nice video on it, and we'll see, we'll see what it's like. So, I had a look at the specs of this. It's very, very professional um, in terms of what it can do, the features it's got, um, and on on the computer anyway, it looked top quality. This is the first time I've had one in my hand, so obviously it's not a proper unboxing video, but we'll have a wee look at it. So it comes in this awesome little package. It's quite a nice package actually. Good sturdy zips and everything on it, protective material. I've looked at the pictures and stuff, and it does look like a quality bit of kit. Guys, first impressions of the top down is it's a solid bit of kit. Really well made, packaging's really nice. Comes with all the different adapter plugs you would need for charging. Um, train. I've still not got used to that yet, we've been in here all week. So yeah, turn it on, there's a bit of initial setup I need to go through. We'll connect it to the Wi-Fi. I think I need to put this password in as well, this activation code to get it to work. So let's get it set up and then we'll have a play with it. So guys, the main attraction of the Top Don is, well, quite frankly, the price. It's a fraction of the price of most of the other ones you see out there, like the Autels and the Snap-on tools. It's got all the same features you would expect for a high-end diagnostic machine, like key programming, injector programming, it can even turn the coolant pumps on and off on the new modern cars so you can bleed the coolant systems. It can do BMS resets, steering geometry resets, loads of programming, loads of coding. You can do diagnostic work, you can read live data. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with this. So what we're going to do, we're going to test it on a couple of cars, show some uses of it. And then we've also got a little bit of work on the Audi we can do with it. So let's get into it. So another great use for the AD800 is you can take it when buying a new car, you can plug it in and check for any current, cleared or historic codes that have been left stored in the system before you make the purchase. If you're into tuning and modifying cars like we are, you can use the Top Don to check your engine vitals like your air fuel ratio, timing, lambda temperatures, all that kind of stuff so you don't run too rich or too lean and cause damage to your engine by detonation. So guys, we've shown you a couple of uses like how to use it when you go to buy a new car, how to use it for tuning and modifying and things. What we're going to do now is we're going to use it as a diagnostic tool. If you remember back a few videos, we replaced the ABS sensor on this Audi. Um, but what we've actually got is an intermittent fault where the ABS light still comes on and off now and again. Uh, through experience, I'm probably thinking that it's because the sensor gap to the pickup ring is slightly too big um, and it needs to be closed up a wee bit. But I'm going to use the tool to check that. I'll see if we can do a test with it to see if it can read the pickup ring and then we'll make the adjustments and clear the fault. Right guys, so we've read the fault codes on the brake ECU and it turns out that it's actually an intermittent fault on the left rear ABS sensor. And if you remember, we done the right hand side. So... I don't have a multimeter or anything with me, so we can't check the sensor. I'm a wee bit far away for the, the internet at the moment, so I can't quite connect to it. But normally, if you click on this fault code, it'll actually Google search what the fault code means. Um, but yeah, when we get back home, we'll probably do exactly the same as what we've done the last time. I'll get the multimeter out, I'll check the sensor, make sure it's the sensor that's faulty and it's no... Because another thing could be slight play in a wheel bearing. If you've got very slight play in a wheel bearing and you go round the roundabout a certain way, it can actually pull the ABS ring away from the sensor slightly and just give you a slightly bigger gap, which will intermittently throw a fault. So I don't have all the tools for that here. 
we will check that when we get back and I'll give you an update on that in a later video but what we're going to do now is we're going to do the service on it because we never done it when we ran up to Scotland we, the weather was too bad so I've got all the stuff here let's get it jacked up we'll do the oil and filter diesel filter and then we'll use the top done tool to reset the service light so I've taken it for a wee quick run around the block just to get it up to temperature again because it had cooled down a wee bit um, I tell you what the boot space in these is brilliant I brought a fence painter back then with me we got uh, a whole bag of tools we look got it's our... huge <laughs> it's brilliant it's a bit messy because we've got tools. our oil drainers we brought our new trolley jack we've got some axle stands and of course we had all our luggage like another week and a half and our 10 days worth of luggage suitcases and stuff in here for boot space you can't knock these out of A4 right I wonder what the estate one's like because that, that'll have height as well so maybe I'm just I don't know if it'll be quite as big I think the seats will the be seats from the back yeah, yeah. good point so, yeah, first thing I want to do before we start jacking this up, this trolley jack we got for Halfords a couple of months ago, it feels like it's low in oil, it feels like it only pumps up at the last wee bit. So while we were picking up the service kit, I got some jack oil, I'm going to take the bung out, check the level in it and make sure it's okay. First thing we've done is take the engine cover off and we've taken the oil filter out just to allow that to drain down into the sump to make sure we get every single bit out. Next I'm going to just change the air filter while we're here and then we'll change the, the fuel filter over and then we'll get the car up on axle stands and we'll drain the oil. But I'm not sure when this was last serviced, could have been a while ago. I've not even had a look at the service book. I know the previous guy we got it off did like to look after his cards, but I don't know because he didn't have this one for too long. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit due a change, would you reckon? He had it sitting for a while, didn't he? Before he sold it to us. Yeah. I'm glad we decided just to do the whole lot and not just an oil and filter. Yeah. It was quite good though. But didn't in Peterborough. I didn't have a chance to get any auto parts for these parts. Um, but didn't in Peterborough, at the old place I used to go to when I worked down here, they remembered me and they still had my account open. So we still got trade discount on them which is good look at the difference yeah same size but yeah look at that gross completely different I think we'll need to empty some leaves at the bottom of that there's some leaves in the bottom of the air box as well So we got the we got the old fuel filler out. Pipes were a bit tight on there, and one of them came off and managed to spray diesel or the engine and me. But we've got it off now. I Made don't think. Mess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think this has been changed for a while either. So it's good that it's getting done. So yeah. 
Oh, you get a whole brand new one? Yeah, yeah, whole thing comes. I always thought there was something inside you had to swap out. No, you do on some of them. Some of them are cartridges, just like the oil filter. Yeah. But these, these are just a straight swap. That looks quite cool. It's all pink and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then that one's manky. Yep. So where we've got your oil filter off, it's a good idea to keep it covered so that you've not got crap going into it. Yeah, the last thing you want is bits of stuff going down there. Guys, when you're changing your oil filter, always replace the seals. There's nothing worse than putting it all back together and finding out there's a seal leaking. It's much easier to do it than now. And when you're replacing them, always make sure you just give them a wee bit of the lube up, with just a wee bit of the old oil, or a bit of new oil, whatever. Just so that they're no dry going in. What you'll also find with most cartridge filters is they'll have a top and a bottom marked on them as well. Just make sure you put them in the right way. Sometimes it doesn't matter, sometimes it does. It's easier just to put it in the right way. Is this tool I've got for the oil filters. It fits on the caps perfectly. It's for Mercedes and Volkswagen. I've had this for years and I can't remember for the life of me where I got it. But what I will do is I will try and find a link to one similar or this one and put it in the description for these because it's a great tool for getting these off. I've seen loads of these with horrible plier marks and everything around them and people try to put grips on them. These are only about a tenner I think so. If I can find a link I'll put it in the description. It might not be there straight away but I will find it. We're going to go for this with no funnel. Don't miss. Do you shake it? I'll try. It's not milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> just, just don't miss. I'll try. I want a milkshake. The easiest way to do this is to go sideways. Oh, yeah. It's like, it a, its, side. it's like getting a fresh corn in the milk. Yeah. You're going to miss. You're going to no, miss. No, no, no. We're all good. There you go, bang on the money. So what we need to do now, now that you've got your oil topped up, you need to start the car, let it run for a few seconds, and then turn it off again. That'll give you a chance to refill the engine with oil, because um, you always get some that will sit in the head, some that will fit in, sit in the filter housing. You just need to make sure you refill everything and then before you drive anywhere, double check your oil level again and make sure it's still okay. So that's us had it running. Um, we left it running for a couple of minutes, just checked for leaks at the filter, leaks at the oil filter, diesel filter, made sure all the pipes were okay. We'll let this settle for a wee minute while we pack away these tools, check the oil again. And then we'll take it for a wee test drive. Guys, there we have it. Another service done in the driveway. If you need to get rid of your old engine oil, remember, just put it in an empty bottle. Take it to any of your local recycling centres. They've got a used oil uh, container there that you can drop this off at. So, oil level's done. I've reset the service light using the top down. This has been a great tool. Um, Check the all fault codes. We know what we're going to do with that back sensor when we get home. We'll check it with the multimeter and stuff again. There is a test on here for checking the ring gap. I did find it. Um, but we'll do that when we get home and I'll update these in a later video. But what a great bit of kit. So that's all done. Last thing we need to do now is take this for a spin down the road. Make sure everything's okay. And we're good to go. Guys, that's it. Another massive thank you to Top Don for sending us out the AD800. It's an absolutely brilliant bit of kit. Perfect for the DIYer or the professional. It's got all the features you would want. The build quality is brilliant. 
We are certainly going to be using it in every car going forward. And if you want to pick one up for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below. So once again, thanks for watching. Join us next week where we're going to be messing about with an MX-5 and we're heading down to check out another popular UK YouTuber to see what he's all about. Yeah, join us next week, guys.